Uh, hey folks, can you hear me now? Great. Well, let's see, what's new? So the new avatars are out. I see some people are uh, checking those out already. Those went live uh, yesterday. So that's our first uh, first avatars that are using the extended bento skeleton. Uh, there's some horsey ones. There's some ha some things with wings, uh, tails and stuff. So I think uh, yeah, I think they did a nice job with them. And hope uh, people have fun playing around with them. see what else um, let's see we, we had some discussions about uh, content protection issues last week as I mentioned then it's you know this isn't really the format for it but uh, you know it will pass things along to support as, as they come up um, but uh, it's uh, you know I, I understand the concern but uh, I would suggest we should probably keep most of that stuff in the support framework rather than uh, this meeting. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, we have, uh, other than that, just continuing to work on the baked bakes on mesh and the animated object stuff. Um, the, uh, let's see, the latest thing on animated objects is uh, that we've been Trying to get link sets to work correctly. You can have a, if you have a bunch of different prims, and each prim wants to send out its own animation requests. Um, you know, getting all of that stuff to work correctly requires a little bit more uh, code than what we currently had. So, uh, been uh, been poking on that lately. Seems to be coming along okay. Yeah. I had a request with regard to the animated objects that came up with when chatting with a couple of friends. And the way we got to this request was that we were discussing that y you were saying previously that you didn't want the animated objects to be able to link to your avatar because you're concerned about having two rigs. And we were discussing how to animate like, like if you were um, riding on a mount, like, like in an MMO or something, um, how to animate the rider and the mount at the same time in a way that, you know, that the two animations wouldn't get to offset so that your butt is, like, flying around in the air and not sitting on the thing anymore, um, but without sacrificing animation integrity to where it, it's not moving very much, because... I don't know about you, but my understanding of the whole Bento project and this animated objects thing is that we want to get away from having really stiff sort of things in Second Life and be able to open up more movement like you would expect to see in other games. So we were discussing how to make it so that you can animate things together like that. And a suggestion that had come up from a friend of mine was that it might be beneficial with the animated objects to be able to animate as part of the rig this sitting point. So if you put this animated object on the ground to be able to animate the point where an avatar would sit on it as part of an animation file, which might be a useful thing. So I think currently when an avatar sits, it's actually changing. Um, it's actually changing the parent, right? You're turning the avatar into a child object of, of the, the seed. Um, I mean, are you, are you talking about actually doing that, or just sort of moving it in such a way that it it looks like that's kind of what you're doing? 
Um, yeah, I, I think that would involve making the avatar a child of whatever you're sitting on, so that then you would be able to control where the, the, the sitting avatar is going as part of the same animation file that's animating the NPC object. Yeah, I mean, it seems like there's a couple of different, um, there's a couple of different aspects of this, right? It's like, can you take these uh, animated objects and have them, you know, sit on things, and uh, then can, um, you know, then can other things get uh, get attached to them? Um, so you've got, you know, animated objects that want to be uh, attachments, um, you know, we've had that request, and then but then you could also have, uh, you know, they want to be seated on a, a you know, a chair or something like that. Um, it's, uh, I think it's a, it's an interesting suggestion. If, if you want to file a JIRA for it, that's the kind of thing that's helpful to have on hand as we're kind of working through the various, um, in the various parts of the project. Um, you know, the the way these things usually go, as, as you probably recall from Bento, is that, uh, you know, at some point you've got to draw the line between, uh, you know, what's required for the initial release and, and what, uh, you know, is going to wait for a subsequent project and, uh, you know, get something out. But um, it's, you know, I, I do understand that there's a, a lot of interest in uh, these kinds of uh, interaction issues and, and it's something that we should be uh, we should be looking at being able to uh, being able to animate the object and attach it or attach to it or make it look like you're attached to it by attaching it to you would kind of um, it let you do a lot more with uh, was AOs if you've got like a walking stick you could throw it up and catch it, that kind of thing. Or you could have your mounts, your shoulder pets, your pets that sit on one shoulder and run around, jump in your pocket or whatever. Like that. Which would be really cool. Yeah, I think that's what we've probably had the most requests for so far is uh, you know, attachments for, for pets so that you can uh, uh you know, have them associated with your avatar, and you can teleport with them, and and uh, you know that that sort of thing. Animated mounts would be uh, pretty pretty epic as well. I know a lot of people like vehicles, but they don't like the fact that uh, really you can only res them in certain places. You can't actually go anywhere with them because most of the land isn't actually really connected. You can't teleport, you can't res it somewhere and then teleport from inside it with it to somewhere else and drive around. The uh, animated match, if you were able to oh, oh, either attach oh. it to you and then have something where it overrides the animation built into it so that you're always static and it does the moving or, or however it works. Yeah, so, uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, that would, that would give you the sort of effects of your vehicles and all that kind of coolness while having uh, the ability to actually make use of it. Yeah, I mean, that was my first thought, actually, was being able to have them attach the avatar and interact with you that way, but, um... I, I feel like you had said at one point that that wasn't a direction that you felt you could go, so if you could, that would be even better as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, so, uh, I, I mean, are you thinking about the scenario of the, the animated object is attached to the avatar, or, or you know, the animated object kind of is the vehicle, and, and you want the avatar to be able to attach to it? Um, both. Well, I, actually, I mean, I don't I'm really scared. I'm, I've got that. Yeah, go on. <laughs> I'm just trying to come up with a way by which <gasps> the two objects can flawlessly interact with each other, whether that's by attaching or by sitting and being able to animate the, the person that is sitting on the object. Either way, I feel like would be able to work. 
it, it's just a matter of um, what would better integrate with the system we've already got. Yeah, I know in the case of vehicles, um, you know, we we have some existing framework that that works now for for non-animated objects, right? If you've got a uh, uh, you know, a, a car or like an old style horse or something like that, um, then it, it it is possible for the avatar to uh, to be seated on those, and that that stuff generally behaves, right? How, how do you actually define what the attachment point is for that? Well, the main problem with those is you have to res them first, which means where you can use them and what you can do with them is pretty limited. Yeah, so with a vehicle sort of thing, like what I do with my horse avatars in order to have another avatar ride them, is you would res a vehicle that both avatars would sit on, and then each one would animate independently. But the problem with that, really, is that Second Life just can't really be trusted to reliably play multiple animations at the same time. So then they need to be animated in such a way that the rider and the animal that you're riding, uh, like the, the back of the horse and the butt of the rider, both stay more or less in the same spot. Whereas, let me, let me find a avatar of mine really quick. Um. If you could specify which bone you are sitting on. Yeah, well, what I what I was thinking there was like there could be a sitting bone, or maybe even just uh, being able to animate the origin and have the origin be what you sit on. So here's here's a rideable mount that I created, and well, actually, it, it's kind of staying still while I'm typing. But you see that the body's kind of moving around, and my butt's kind of moving around, and I'm able to do that sort of thing because the the mount and the avatar are both the same animation, the same rig. But if it was two different animations playing, as if one animation playing on the rider and one animation playing on the NPC object, then you, you can't really create a lot of motion in which they, the, the mount is moving around and your butt is moving with the mount. You, you, they would come out of sync and then you would have a situation where you're just kind of flying around in the air. So some means by which we can sync, that, sync, sync up interactions like that, whether it be by being able to wear the NPC objects or being able to res them and animate the sit point or both would be really helpful to be able to create interactions like that. Yeah, that's that's an interesting point. I mean, I thought about the, um, the animated object as potentially being, uh, you know, writable or whatever, but, you know, which of course you can already kind of do with, with objects that you res, but um, the, if, if they are actually animated, then it... Uh, it makes it harder to keep things in sync. Um, I'm trying to find the JIRA now. There was one fairly detailed proposal uh, already that was talking about um, these kinds of issues. And I'm just trying to see if I can uh, pull that up. Um, Yeah, I apologize for the uh, uh, lack of whirliness. Um, I can't uh, can't look them up that fast myself. Uh, this is the Jira. It was talking about um, 
A means of visually rigging a sitter to uh, animated mesh skeleton bone. Um, I was talking about some different options. The proposal here was that it was an additional uh, LSL command that I think would. Uh, I think the idea there is that you'd be defining some kind of a constraint so that uh, you know as as you know either or both of your objects are playing their animations, you're maintaining this. Uh, Relationship with the you know designated uh, you know bone or position. Well, yeah, thanks, Lucia. Just uh, busy looking at Jira instead of at the back scroll. That's the one. Yeah, a uh, usual disclaimer about the fact that it's accepted. That's not guaranteeing we're going to do it. It's just that it's, uh, you know, something we want to be able to refer to as a as a possible and part of the process of working on the project. So anyway, that um, hopefully that's open for comments currently. Um, okay, I just said it for needs more info. So. Um, People should be able to comment on that if they want to. Um, that that would be one place to talk about the kinds of things that you're trying to accomplish with uh, with these things, and you know, address whether this particular proposal would uh, would cover it or not. Um, but uh, if if people are thinking in other directions, it's it's fine to file additional jurors too. Uh, let's see. There's a question about. Caching or preloading animations. Um, yeah, so I mean, the way that works now is as soon as we see a request for an animation, um, you know, we go and fetch it. So it's it's faster if we already have it in the local cache. You know, if we've used the, the that animation previously, um, and it's it's uh, slower if we have to go out over the network and and fetch it. Um, and what do we have for preloading sounds? I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, okay, so uh, the idea would be just at the beginning of your script, you would say, hey, I want to, you know, pre-cache the following uh, animation, uh, you know, names or IDs, and then it would kind of go off and do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Not necessarily the state entry, but the point being that you would be, you'd be kicking it off sometime before you actually needed the animation, and that would uh, presumably be a, a faster process then to start playing it back. Um. Yeah. Okay. Well, LL preload sound uh, makes sense. You know, my guess would be that that wouldn't be particularly hard to extend to other. Uh, other types of assets. I see there's a there's a linked bug seven eight five four for preload asset for arbitrary assets. Um, don't know if there's any feedback on that. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks. Um, let me uh, let me take a look at that. It's probably. Uh, you know, I can see there are definitely cases where that would be useful. Um, you know, it, it may or may not fit within the framework of the 
uh, animated object stuff, but we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it. Uh, let's see, I have a question. Is uh, animating rig mesh going to use the current bento skeleton? Uh, yes, it's it's based on the same uh, skeleton as, as avatars are, so that uh, you you have the, the same range of joints available. Um, it doesn't do everything that avatars do currently, but it does uh, it does include the full set of joints. Yeah, syncing animations obviously has been a problem all along. You get this, uh, you know, you got a bunch of different avatars that are trying to play the same animation, and then they all start as soon as the animation shows up, and you get this like sort of unplanned line dance effect, and it's kind of uh, kind of squirrely. Yeah, uh, yeah, Lex, don't, don't know what the dispo is going to be on preloading animations. I'll take a look at it. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it's not something that's, you know, obviously part of the project, but if it's, you know, useful to enough people and it's not a, not a huge deal to do it, we might, uh, we might look into it. Trying to look at this um, uh, Giazzo link, and I'm getting kind of seasick. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be looking for there. Oh, is this the problem with the uh, imposter? box being too small and so stuff gets cut off. Yeah, okay. I know I've seen a Jira for that, but I'm not sure what happened to it. Um, I kind of think somebody was working on it. Yeah, anyway, I'll take a look. Alright, I'm scrolling back up now if I've missed anybody else. Um, I had a question about returning mesh asset swap LSL function. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question there. Uh, Vincent asked this. Oh yeah, uh, that uh, that was a problem in the early days of Mesh, and uh, I I uh, don't think we want to revisit that particular can of worms. Let's see, I had a question about where animation assets for NPCs need to be stored to be able to be played. Um, yeah, the, the way this works right now is uh, similar to uh, the way it works now for, um, 
for mesh attachments, right, you can put a, an animation object uh, inside your uh, attachment, uh, inside your attachments, and uh, you know then reference them inside your scripts. Um, and so that's the that's the approach we've been using uh, with the animated objects as well. Uh, so you can put you can put animations inside of your your animated objects um, and then reference them by name in in the, the scripts that are in those objects. The object use an AO. Well, um, I, I mean, the original idea with an AO is that you're you're overriding the default animations, um, right? You've got the built-in walk or stand or whatever, and you're trying to replace those. Um, in the case of, of the objects, um, you know, they don't run, they don't play any animations by default. They only play the ones that you asked for. So, I mean, you can have a script that tells it what animations to play, but it, it wouldn't exactly be an AO in that sense. Oh, but there is uh, the pathfinding system. So, and the pathfinding system, if you look at the code and the, you know, you have um, similar functions to how an AO would work in a way. Uh, yeah, I haven't really worked with the pathfinding system. How, how do you how do you see that going? Well, there are different, you know, things that trigger uh, an event. So, you know, you can have something trigger just wandering, just walking around or um, following something. You could trigger it to follow something. And all of these things would be, of course, linked to animation. So, in many ways, it would be a lot like an AO. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you think of an AO as kind of a uh, an object that's in charge of controlling animations, then uh, you, you know you can certainly um, you can certainly have those. It's just it, it would I think it would work a bit differently than what it is with the uh, uh, you know avatars today. And I'll, I'll just point out to everybody that we didn't have an AO in Second Life either. It was made by somebody. Um, we didn't even have AO functions until a couple years ago. So, of course, what will likely happen here is somebody will make one. Yeah, and as, as I mentioned, the intent here is that the, um, you know, the initial support for animated objects is, is just the first stage. Um, and you know, once that's out and working, um, you know, we would be looking into adding more uh, kind of NPC-like functionality, and you know, that's where you get into things like uh, you know, allowing these things to have uh, to have a locomotion graph the way that avatars do, you know, to have their state actually tracked on the on the server side. Um, you know, once once you have that, then then the idea of an AO is is actually you know kind of directly comparable, um, and you know that's that's also the stage that we would look at things like uh, you know support for baking and, and support for uh, uh, you know kind of wearable uh, inventory that sort of thing. Uh, you know, some of that wouldn't really make sense until we had bakes on mesh because of course these are mesh objects, um, but. Uh, you know the the intent there is we'd be looking at uh, you know kind of a follow-on project once we do kind of the the simplest thing that works for just allowing you to animate the objects initially. Yeah, and of course we have to add an LSL interface to Skynet as well.
Yeah, I wanted to bring up that, um, uh, well, I don't, know, I don't know how to put this without offending people, but uh, years ago, I'll, I'll say it like this, uh, years ago, um, when Pathfinding was first put out, um, there was all this code that was written by Linden Lab or by one of your employees, and it was a really nice code. I took, uh, it was like code to handle like three or four different um, uh, moving objects at the same time. Almost like a herd. Th this was LSL uh, stuff? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and my, my point is that this was like such beautiful code and obviously it was code to test out the pathfinding and everything like that. And I thought to myself when I was reading through the code, that, um, you know, I'm going to come back to this when I want to work on uh, pathfinding stuff. And eventually I did come back to it, but I never found the code again. It was almost like it was white. <laughs> but um, my point is, though, that we, you know, Linden Lab makes all these features and everything. And in the process, we do have to test things. And it, it would be nice, instead of having to wait for someone, someone in the open market to create some code for it, if you know Linden Lab would spend a little bit of time in development of writing some finished code for us in these related things that we're working on. Yeah, I, I mean it's a good point. We've we've certainly had this come up in various projects where. Um, you know the you know something is out there and it kind of works, but you don't have uh, a lot of good examples to kind of get you started with it. Um, and uh, you know, honestly, we've had more incidents than I would like of stuff just disappearing from our wiki because of uh, you know people don't realize that the links need to be kept live or whatever. So it's uh, yeah, it it can be a problem, and uh, I. Uh, you know, I, I think it, a lot of it's just kind of a resource problem. We don't have uh, as many people working on that kind of thing uh, as, as would probably be ideal. But, um, you know, it's, uh, about all I can say about that is that we'll look for opportunities to try to, to you know, put out example stuff uh, as we can. But um, it's, it's, I, I agree with you. We don't, uh, we don't always have the greatest set of uh, kind of starter information. Well, and, and that's, I didn't want, you know, to step on coder's toes. And, but, you know, anytime you're developing something, you know, the guy who's, who's actually got his hands on it and writing code for it and designing it in the first place kind of knows how it could or can work. So it is nice to get some really good example code of some complex stuff. We have lots of simple little scripts. But, you know, nothing really all that complex. And it would be nice to get to see some of that complex code coming from the lab that we could all use, you know. Uh, a great example, too, is like the ZHAO. You know, we talk about it all the time because everyone use, uses it. And that was, you know, something that was made, you know, open source by somebody and just given to the community. Well, you know at the lab when you guys write code it's all open source for us and that allows for us to just freely spread it and if we had some really nice code um then the coders in second life could take that code and do crazy stuff with it. yeah well i think uh uh you know lex raised a valid point though which is that you know, often the the people who are developing this stuff on the Linden side aren't the, the kind of experts on what the the end users or the or the content creators really want, and so you know we we can't necessarily write the definitive uh, you know LSL uh, AO or whatever because we don't necessarily know all the things that that people are going to want to do. A lot of that stuff kind of gets evolved by the community once people. Uh, you know, get in there and start poking at it. They say, "Oh well, you know, it needs this and that and the other thing." Um, so, uh, you know, to to the extent that that we can, you know, help uh, help give people pointers to you know how stuff is intended to be used or or to give good examples. Um, you know, I think it's it's great if we can do that. But 
um, I think often uh, it really is kind of a collaborative activity. And I mean, even with uh, with Bento, you know, we didn't really know all of the things that we were going to need to be able to do with that project until we started working with the um, you know content creators uh, during the development process. And, and a lot of what we wound up doing really came out of uh, uh, you know those requests. Um, so you know, again. Uh, we can't necessarily kind of, you know, create this this sort of perfect, fully formed vision, and then just uh, you know, kind of hand it off and say, "Here it is." It's uh, it, it's really a much more kind of uh, you know collaborative process than that. Well, I, I can definitely understand uh, what you're saying. Uh, but you know, it's some, it's some, definitely something to think about. And I've also even thought about it. You know, um, Linden Lab wants us to um, create experiences, um, and this is the not easy thing to do. Um, but at the same time, Linden Lab has developed a few games. Well, you know, the question I would ask is, why aren't all the code and everything for these games? open source and available to everybody and we should have uh, you know a thousand different versions of whatever game that Linden Lab puts out or tests out or whatever yeah you open source those games and people start cheating I was going to say especially with something like uh, Linden Realms where people yeah. can end up getting um, actually getting money out of it yeah there's already probably problems with uh, people figuring out ways to uh, search for search for where the gems are and just auto path so that we can bugger off and watch TV while their while their avatars just running around doing everything. Yeah, uh, that's uh, an interesting point about the trade-offs there. Um, you know, I, I th certainly ideally we'd like to. Uh, have more open source stuff out there, but there are cases where for abuse. Um, you know, that said, I, I wasn't involved in the uh, the London Realms or the other experience developments, so I, you know, I can't say exactly what the motivation was for, uh, you know, the, the fact that that's not currently open source. Well, the reason why I kind of bring this up, too, is... Um, like the way I look at um, a lot of these worlds, um, Second Life, Hi-Fi, others, um, they're very code intense. So if you're not a coder, uh, it's somewhat useless to, to uh, try and make something complex, you know. Um, and that's where the bottleneck is. Like we have, a, you know, hundreds, thousands of Photoshop experts, uh, you know, uh, lots of mesh experts too. And other things, but you know, where is the bottleneck? The bottleneck is in the coding. No, there's going to be a good coders out there. You just kind of there are there are good in, coders, but the, uh, the LSL yeah. is also really simple and dead easy to learn for anyone, even if they have even if they've never coded in anything. Yeah. Yes, to do simple stuff, it is very easy. But to do yeah. something complex like a game or anything like that, I mean, it, the it, lab. It wouldn't I really take that long to learn how to do that stuff, though? And it is quite well documented, and there are... Yeah, it is very well uh, documented. These scripts, groups, are really helpful as well. Yeah, I well, mean, you wouldn't want just... You know, uh, coders are content creators, too. Uh, they're not... You know, you don't want to just have everybody have the same kind of measures. You know? Yeah, but that wouldn't happen, okay? So, Linden Lab would put out a mesh or anything else, and what would we do with it? We would do all kinds of crazy things with it. It would no, you know, you're not putting coders out of business because Linden Lab wrote some code, you know? We take that code and do something crazy with it. And no, that's my point. Um, if they were uh, sourcing all the code for an entire game, maybe having sort of, um, if they put out snapshots of this is one way to do this type of thing, or you can get this to interact with that this way, that kind of thing would be good because that would be useful for pretty much everyone. Well, having think about, a, think about a, the, 
Think about like Better the base games. There are only so many different types of games. There's basically three or four major genres of game of game types. So if Linden Lab just wrote some basic code for those, and then the whole community would take those and make their own experiences out. That's why, you know, I don't I know Linden Lab wants to push the experiences, but I don't see that happening very much and I think I kinda understand why, you know, it, it's not that easy. Well the experience is really not hard to use, it's just there's not um, not a lot in it at the moment that that you use. I mean, besides the database and the, the teleporting avatars animating. Yeah, well, so, you know, clearly it would be better if there's more, uh, you know, shared open source code. Um, but on the other hand, we, we clearly have resource constraints uh, on the Linden side as well. Um, you know, we, we have coders, but they're doing a lot of other stuff. They're not uh, they're not spending most of their time trying to write, uh, you know, nice, easy to understand LSL for uh for people, um, and you know, I, I don't see uh, realistically. I don't see that there's, you know, that that's likely to change in the near future. Help, um, help. Maybe I should throw out the idea that you know what we really need is some kind of a shared venue where it's easy for um, it's easy for you know anyone to share code, not not just Linden Lab, but uh, you know anybody who wants to participate. Um, it, does that make sense? Do you think if something like that existed, it would be useful? Well, there is a script library on the wiki. Yeah. Yeah, there are some examples in the wiki. As well as I'm not sure if the wiki qualifies as super easy to use, but it, uh, you know, it's there, and it well, does have quite a lot of uh, stuff. We're going to say pretty much everything you need to uh, make pretty much any game purely within LSL is already on the wiki. But if you if you're thinking of um, sort of like a similar thing to sort of this little meeting thing, but for coders, it might be worth getting hold of the um, Paladon Oxbridge group and seeing if they'd put something on their schedule and advertise through their group. So I know they do a lot of um, sort of tutorials for people. Well, I'll. You know, I use other engines too. So, and on Unity, uh, you know, that's one of the great things on Unity is you can just buy a prepackaged game, throw it into your Unity, you know, engine, and throw in some different assets, swap out some assets, and you have a brand new game. You know, uh, Second Life is, you know, 12, 13 years old now, 14 years old, and uh, we don't have that. Well, it is a lot harder than that field kind field. of thing uh, in Second Life would be phenomenally harder than doing it in... Um, yeah, there's so many different objects that you need to have scripts and do this thing. Plus the fact that Unity is a dedicated build-a-game-here engine rather than a do-whatever-the-hell-you-want kind of engine. It's not trying to comp like cope with absolutely everything everyone's doing all at once. So there are kind of uh, limitations to what you can do within Second Life as far as that goes. Or there may be some kind of external tool that would be usable like a land editor to do it. Might be doable. Unity is not limited to 64k. Yeah, well the size of scripts is... Uh uh, definitely an issue if you're trying to do something very complicated. Ever a chance of getting that raised? <laughs> Not it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we have raised various other limits um, <laughs> in the past, uh, but I uh, don't, don't know what the prospects would be for, for scripts in particular.
Well, it's just uh, some thoughts I had in, you know, I, when I think about, like, bringing, getting more people into Second Life, it's about having stuff for them to do, and more games, and more um, things that they're familiar with. I'm, that's what I'm thinking about. How do we get more games? How do we get more things for people to do? It, it definitely would be nice to have more things to actually do, because uh, it would kind of it would bridge that gap between MMO and virtual world where you have so many options but no guidance. It would kind of give you that little bit of guidance here and there that would uh, sort of increase the chances of people likely to come in and have fun and stick around. And, and I think NPCs or animated meshes is uh, a step in the right direction for that too. Yeah. Oh yeah, animated meshes, if you can do NPCs, that'll be awesome. Quite a lot of fun things to do with that. Alright, I had a lot of discussion going here. If I missed anybody's question, uh, you may want to repeat it. I don't know when we'll have a project viewer out. Um, you know, right now I'm still at the stage of we're poking around in corners of the code that, you know, nobody's tried to do anything with for a while, and uh, so sometimes you try to change something and it works fine, and sometimes you find some weird surprise that you have to deal with. Uh, so, you know, when you're in that mode, it's very hard to predict uh, how, how long it's going to take to uh, get beyond it. Um, you know, so far I, I think things have gone reasonably smoothly, but um, you know, there's there's a fair number of uh, kind of corners that we haven't poked in yet. So, well, uh, you know, all I can say is, uh, you know, once we feel like we have something that's you know useful and and uh, sufficiently stable, we'll, we'll look to put a project viewer out. Hey guys, you mind if I if I butt in here? I don't create items in Second Life, I just design uh, sims, but um, the reason they won't implement more games and more things for people to do is because LSL is based on really old coding, and um, it doesn't utilize your PC till its full extension, whereas like other games that are similar years old, let's say World of Warcraft, Lord of the Rings, and things like that, they've been upgraded to use multi-core CPUs and also to use your GPUs a lot more better. They're better at extending the hardware and using the hardware, whereas LSL is still mostly CPU based. So no matter how good of a graphics card you have, how powerful it is, how much system RAM you have, if LSL is only using one CPU core and maximum up to two, even if you have an eight core CPU, it's going to limit what you can do in here. And it's going to limit the experiences you can give to the end user that uses the program. Now, as far as other games, CSGO and things like that, which I have designed for, scripted for, yeah, it is server-side, but the way it's implemented, the way it uses the net framework for Windows, is very, very outdated. Yeah, LSL isn't running on your computer, though. It's running on exactly. your computer. Exactly. Running on computer. Exactly, but the way they implemented the coding to use multiple cores is very ancient. It's still running off a old coding that was meant for dual core processors and things like that. It's not meant for the newer. Well, it is mono. But, yeah, it is, and they could update it. Instead of working on a new system, which I think is going to completely fail, they need to upgrade this one. That way you can keep the player base, because if it keeps going the way it's going, people are going to eventually leave. 
October is getting better, but Second Life incrementally is getting a little bit better, but not at the pace it should be going. And they make millions a year. They're not broke. It's not that they don't have the money. No, I'm talking about Second Life itself. They could make it a lot better experience. Upgrade the servers to more common hardware that's used these days for MMOs and things like that. They could. They have millions stockpile. How do you think they stuck 14 million in the new project and Sands are? They're not broke. Exactly. Well, you can't... Alright, well... Let's say you go to an office and they give you five wrenches to fix a car and you're missing the metric system wrenches. No matter how many times you pull with that seven eighths, you're not going to fix it. you got to have the right tools. And as far as us making us sell better, they have to upgrade it and implement some more modern technology into it. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You can only do so much with the tools they give you. Yeah, well, uh, you know, we're trying to improve what we can. I, I can, I can promise you from experience that you know everybody at the company is busy, and we're not just uh, lying around rolling in enormous piles of money. But uh, <laughs> oh no, no, I know that. Be, beyond <laughs> that, there's there's always going to be questions about priorities, and uh, you know, we have a very impassioned uh, community that has uh, a lot of different perspectives on that. I still don't think anyone's actually kind of maxed out the sort of activity game potential of what SL can handle anyway, really. Still, it's not that I can. But, I mean, it would be nice to be able to do, like, a real MMO experience, you know? Like, build, like, a little mini sim with, like, whole RPG built inside of it that you don't have to wait ten seconds for whatever object you're interacting with to reply to you. Well, there are things... It'd be nice. There are things like that. I make one of those things. So, well, um, dozens of things. Yeah, there's, uh, there's one that, um, yeah, I know it's, uh, working on. Yeah, that's what I'm speaking about, performance. It'd be a lot better, you know, if it could handle a lot more. There's also things that people who make objects can take into account. Like, the other day I went and bought a brand new mesh house. They had a damn coffee cup. With a 1024 texture on it, unlike why on a coffee cup, could simply put a 512. Nobody's going to zoom that close on a coffee cup. Uh, the reason everybody puts 1024 textures on everything is because we don't allow them to put 2048 textures on everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> if you could follow up for me, I know you mentioned at the beginning that. Um, to keep the content protection talk in the support framework. I was just wondering, was that... Re were you referring to even the... Um, the no-copy transfer loophole that's in all the viewers, or is that just in the copy bot? Were you just talking about the copy bot? Uh, I mean, really, I was I was referring to the kind of policy discussions we were having last week about uh, you know how these kinds of things are enforced, and uh, you know that's that's completely a support side thing. Um, you know, if there's if there's you know bugs that are getting exploited that we're not aware of or uh, uh, that sort of thing, then yeah, definitely uh, definitely let us know. It's uh, it's always good to have uh, you know jurists for that sort of thing. I mean, as far as I know, that bug has been going on for over a year. The, um, no copy marketplace. Um, I don't know if it has a name. Right. I mean, I don't want to go into too much explanation of it. I can try to find it.
Yeah, I mean, if if there's issues that we don't uh, that we're not already aware of, that we don't have jurors for, um, you know, if if it's something that's uh, you know that's that's confidential, you can uh, you know that you wouldn't want to put in a in a public facing jury, then you can uh, you can certainly drop us a line about that. You can just PM me or whatever. Um, what I mean, but uh, and, and so you don't know, even have to use copyright to rip objects or scripts. Um, with the way they listed, the way sound channels and script channels are listed in the LSL, you can write scripts to listen for scripts, and you can listen for whatever objects are being sent textures, and you can snag the texture UUID and use it on whatever you want. They left things way too insecure, especially the voice servers, which you can just ping somebody's MAC address automatically. Yeah, I'm just um, no, no, copy now. bots, copy oh, bots man. can't steal scripts. But you can steal scripts with something else. I guarantee you. I mean, it's really bad. Anything in this game can be stolen because the way they designed it, the way they designed way, the way things interact, the way they talk on specific channels. It's really easy. I'm not going to say how to do it because I personally don't do it. But um, I've showed people on my own objects I built that I can steal anything I want from myself. Even when they're locked with no mod, no copy. You can jack it. It's not detectable. Anything above the listening channel 300 is really hard to digest for listener scripts to listen for when people are jacking your ship. Anything above 300. If you're going to steal something, do it on a channel above 300. Damn near impossible for anybody to see it. Well, you can't steal scripts on channels. That's just the message. No, but you can make your scripts work on those channels. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, channels are a factor for listing between two objects. The way you detect with somebody when they're copy your objects, if you're not on your sim, you have a prim on your sim that listens for specific coding that goes on between scripts when they talk. And it listens. And the reason I know is because I'm friends with somebody who designs other viewers that are used to crash sims because he's an MC. And he sent me a folder one time with all the exploits as of working 2017. He's like, looky. I'm like, bro, why are you sending me this? I don't want this. I enjoy SL the way it is. He's like, well, in case anybody ever bothers you. So, I mean, you can, on the encryption side of SL, it's very wide open. And it's very easy to exploit. All right. Well, as I said, I would definitely encourage people to file Jira's. It's, it's great if you know about this stuff. Um... But, uh, well, I sent a ticket in them with the labs yeah. and talked to them up on the phone. And I even sent them a copy of the email. And they said, thanks for that, but um, right now we're not looking into making things more secure. We're more focused on the experience for the user. I sent them a whole copy of everything he sent me, all the scripts he runs and everything. And Linden Labs basically told me to go screw yourself and we're not interested. Lack of better words. Yes. I mean, maybe if I was a major, like, builder in SL, or very well known, maybe they would pay attention. Alright, well, we are at time for this week, so we should probably, uh, we should probably wrap it up. Um... Yeah, I, I can't speak to the history of, of whatever interactions you've already had. I, I would say that we're definitely interested in, in you know, Jira's about any of this stuff. And if it's if it already exists, um, if you want to just PM me with a link, I'd be happy to take a look at it. All right. Well, have a, uh, have a good week, all, and we will uh, we will see you. Uh, I think we have a meeting next week. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, all. Catch you later. Thanks, Fear. Well, it was nice meeting all y'all. Matter of fact, um, I'll compile quite a few of the emails that I've been sent about things like that. And um, if one of y'all are like the main person who sets up these meetings, I can forward it to you.
the main person who sets up these meetings is here. Holy crap. I didn't know I saw y'all streaming and I came on. Yeah, well, well Dap, definitely please come back. Definitely please come back and please, uh... Well, I will. The only reason I don't bring anything in SL is because I can't get it low enough polygon to bring in and Jesus Christ, I make some awesome things in Blender, but <laughs> I thought you had to make it super low poly. I tried and failed. This thing I built had two million faces and SL was like, nope. Not even as a DA, you're not bringing it in. And I wept quietly and yeah, drank a cup of uh, You have to think well, Polly. Why did you need two million faces? Yeah. <laughs> because because I oh, build like... Well, I build CGI for World of Warcraft and Machinimus and stuff like that. And I have models from there that were HD and I was like, Oh, cool, I can bring them. You know, I can change them up a little bit and bring them in and be cool. And Second Life was like... It, it showed it as a green check mark on bring it in. But once it said, com like, whatever it was, I think it was complexity, it was like, nope, big red X, not happening. Well, the Warcraft wouldn't have a 2 million poly model. Yeah. It does when you're doing CGI. Yeah, this is real time, though. You gotta think game, not a CGI. I know. It's all, <laughs> it's all yeah, movie models are way, way bigger than... Uh, normal game model. That's oh sure. my god! I downloaded the model for the World of Warcraft uh, ship that they used for their um, Legion cinematic. Jesus Christ! One point okay. three billion faces on two why pieces they, of land. Why they render them on render farms and not a single GPU? It took me an hour and a half to load it, and then every time I'd swap views, it'd take a twenty minutes to change the view on the game. system would lock up till it was done changing camera angles. At that point, it honestly sounds like you're better off just, like, taking some yeah. screenshots at different angles and then rebuilding it entirely from scratch. God, this is not a movie. <laughs> That's absurd, dude. <laughs> I mean, I'm running a pretty good PC. I mean, I'm running a 1080 Ti water cool. You uh, might A 4.6 gigahertz, and I'm running 32 gigs at DDR4. Yeah, not everybody has that, though. Yeah, that's when true. I, I did, just wish... Go ahead. When I did rendering, I had a whole computer that was... That's all it did. <laughs> you know? And it would be running all day. Well, I, I'm just curious, right? I build, like, really intricate models. Is there, like, a specific way to make sure you're making a mode probably, like, a limitation you can put on objects when you build them? Uh, Yes. Whenever it's a flat face, make it all one square. Right. And rely on textures to make up the detail. Yeah, normal maps. Yeah, that's what you should do, is just normal map the model yeah. you have, and then retop uh, the model again. And then you can use that old normal, and it'll look exactly the same. Marcus Inkpen, me and him, was chatting. He's like, what'd you build today? I was like, I built the church, and he was like, hmm, are you going to bring it in? I said, I can't, it's too complex. He's like, well, let me take a look at it. He looked at it, he said, right, no damn way. <laughs> he said, there's no way I still can handle this. So I was like, well, I'll try. It was nice meeting all y'all, and um, I'll get a hold of Viz, I'll look him up, and uh, send him a message. But um, all of y'all have a good and blessed day. In Cube Republic, I just want to let you know I'm tired of wasting all my money in your store. Kills me. Dad, yeah, definitely come back. Dad, definitely come back to the next meeting. Yeah, I will. Um, I'm part of this place builders meeting. Um, I'm pretty good friends with a few creators. Um, like I know the two that run um, Aphrodite. I know their whole team. They're good friends of mine. Uh, Marcus Inkpin from The Looking Glass, uh, Noke, who owns E.V.E., e. he's a real good friend of mine, and I'm the godfather to um, M-Law and B from B-Designs, I'm their daughter's owner, godfather, so I know a few people in here. But y'all be good and y'all be blessed, and I wish y'all the best in here. Oh, 
not a celeb, no. Closest thing I got to a celebrity was getting to go to the fantasy fair early with one of the ancient moles. Because he happened to visit one of my sims I was designing. And then he just sent me a random CP and I watched him when he opened the floodgates to fantasy fair and people randomly crashing on the map and reappearing. It was hilarious. Took screenshots with him. Oh, it was funny. He was like, watch how long they crash before the first one gets all the welcome mat. I was like, okay. It was like 20 minutes before the first person made out of purgatory. It was funny. Watching Christmas trees on radar. It's as far as it goes, as famous people I know, so. But I don't have many friends, because all of them are like, don't you know that person? Get me something for free, and I just look at them like, I even buy their stuff. I spend all my time creating, so I don't know who's a celebrity. <laughs> all content creators are celebrities. I spend time breaking objects. How about that? <laughs> Just say when you spend five thousand linden on a house and nothing's modified, and you're like, really? all these wasted lindens. Understand. Copy or no copy, okay, I got it. But modify, come on, you're getting people to spend hard on money they put in the game on an object. Just let me change the horrible texture you put on a lampshade that looks like it came from the 70s. Said no. I don't know, I mean, like, let's say in a gacha, right? Because I was thinking of in a gacha, you play for a random chance to get a rare object. Or I'll alter it, right? And you get a bunch of comments. The way I was thinking, because I'm going to design a few gatches, is the ultra rare and rare are modified. And they There's are There's actually a uh, store by the name of Murder of Ravens that the way they run their gotchas is it gives you a, uh, a coupon that is no copy but transferable. And you, once you use it, it gives you the, the modified version but no transfer version of... Um, whatever that item is, and the coupon is only usable once. And I don't know why more people don't do that. Well, the way I was thinking, right, it gives somebody the object, the box is transferred, but once they unpack it, the items can have modify rights. Because a lot of gadgets, you spend a lot of time trying to get that one rare object. Then when you get it, they don't fit your avatar just right, you're just stuck with it. That's why you go to yard sales. all that wasted you limit. Don't, you don't waste your time at gotchas. Yard sales is where it goes. <laughs> well, yeah, some stores have demos for that. Yeah, that's sales. true. Yard sales is where, you, where the money's at. Let somebody else do the hard work getting and spending that money. You just buy the finished result. Or DRD does it. You can go bring your items and they got like little kiosks. And you set the no copy item in there, then it gives you a copy version. Yeah, Soy does that too. Is it? Yeah, Soy does that as well. That was like the first star I've ever seen that does that, but they only do it for their rares, not commons and stuff. Oh no, DRD does it for all of their gatches. All their newer gatches, all of them work. What? Go set them at their store. Yep. Every single gatch item you get from their newer sets, you can bring in and drop them. And then they go, are you sure? And you say yes. And then it takes it and it gives you the copy and modify it. Now I'm gonna have to go over there and do it. I was trying to save the little bit of money I had. Now, mm -hmm. I, gotta, now I gotta go check this out. Well, that's like Dust machine. Bunny. Like, I have a bunch oh, of Dust yeah. Bunny's older catch items when she would say, Hey, send them to me and I'll give you copy and modify versions. So I sent her all the old ones the other day and then she wrote me back, I no longer do it. I was like, well, wait, this was made back when you did do it. Shouldn't you honor what you said when I bought the object? She wrote me back and I am, um, nope. Just, just, that was it. Nope. I was like, man. <laughs> That's horrible. I don't 
like you. Say something that's smart to me. Yeah, that is true. But also, if you sell somebody an object, and written in the little contract when you buy it is you will make it copy and modify, then you have to honor that because you sold it as that. You can't go back and change it. Yep, I totally agree with that. And that is true. Because Linden Labs says it in their rights. That if you sell an object with certain rights and you give it to that person, you have to honor those rights. As far as like, hey, I'll support this object for the lifetime of SL. Then even if it's 10 years down the road and I bring it to you, I'm like, hey, fix it. The door don't work. By Linden Lamb's rules, you're supposed to fix it and make the door work. Because you said you would when you sold that object. Be cool meeting all y'all. I don't know what all y'all build because half of y'all are probably on y'all's real accounts, but good stuff. Mm. Well, it was nice meeting you too. <laughs> what do all you guys do? Like, we know what Kathy does, Gab, and all the rest of y'all. Go ahead, blow out your resumes. Y'all know y'all want to. Come on, do it, do it, do it. Wait, a resume for what? No, no, just saying what we do. Oh, all right. I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's like when somebody asks, okay, so what do you guys do? You're like, oh, well, I don't want to brag, but, um. <laughs> well, I played World of Warcraft with the woman who owns uh, Lovecats. I mean, her raiding wow. I want to know who's been to all the other worlds. And if um, anybody's doing anything there. You're talking about like the other simulators like SL? SL, um, there's Space now, there's Hi-Fi, there's Sansar, there's maybe one or two out there. Well, there's actually one in your own during the meeting. You're not missing anything when it comes to Sansar, trust me. <laughs> I was going to go to Sansar, I can actually run it, and email, 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 nope, 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 nope. So I'm like, the hell with an angle shot. It's, it's the CSI episode all over again. It, it, they lure you in, <laughs> and then you get there and you're like, this is not what I saw. <laughs> It's that bad? I thought it would be good. I mean, they said they'd implement new technology and stuff. Well, it already looks way the hell better than SL. That's yeah. about it. But <laughs> it. It looks like default Maya to me. Like, you know, Maya-generated character, go. I, I mean the areas, not the characters. Because it actually has a real lighting system. Well, it has PBR, but... Um... I mean, I never, you just watched the video, I could tell from the video what it doesn't have. You know, what's not in the video. <laughs> so I knew when I walked in there, I wasn't surprised at all. There's nothing in there. Well, hey, Bunny, I'm going to add you so you can remind me when the meeting is. Because I'm going to be busy. <laughs> I'm always so busy. It's every Thursday. <laughs> Look, girl, I got TBI and short-term memory loss. I'll be sitting here watching YouTube, picking my nose, eating Cheetos, and not even realize. <laughs> and you'll be like, hey, the meeting's on. I'll be like, what meeting? And I'm like, oh, yeah, all right, I'm coming. <laughs> well, I'm a disabled veteran. My memory is shit sometimes. I'm not going to lie. I'll go set my wallet down. Then I'll spend two days looking for it and sitting on the nightstand, looking at me in the face. And I'll be in the bathroom downstairs cursing kicking up a storm go to bed and wake up and look to my left and look there it is <laughs> Polly I, I didn't sign an NDA uh, so I think the... oh, I think for the last group of people that they led into Sansar they assumed some kind of NDA but to me that doesn't mean anything <laughs> you know? yeah the only NDA that I saw was like uh, on the page where it asked me to 
set a password, there was a checkbox that says, I agree to the NDA, and then the link to the NDA didn't even work. So I have no fucking clue what's on it. Yeah, that's that was pretty much my experience, so I was like, you know, I'm not going to go out <laughs> blabbering about all kinds of Sansar stuff, but I'm going to repeat what I said before I ever went in there, and there's nothing there. You can't do anything. You know, you know what that agreement was when you signed that, when you had to click that box? That's so one day they can come back and be like, didn't you read it? And you'd be like, the link was broke. Well, look at it now. You should have read it after. And you'd be like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> Didn't mean to welcome you to the show. That's where they get you. It's like the government. They'll sit there and hold a contract and punch you and cover that fine print up with their hand and be like, all you have to do is sign right here. That's it. You get all this. And as soon as you check that box and they walk away, you're like, what was under their hand? And then about 10 years later, they come back, you owe us this much. How? You see that fine print? Didn't you read it? What fine print that was under his hand? Well, why didn't you tell me it was under his hand? Am I supposed to? Any kind of agreement is subject to a approval in the court. So people can write whatever they want in some user agreement. And people can think that they're going to be held to that. But until it goes into court, nobody really knows. So, so I don't have a problem signing these things because I know if it goes to court, any kind of little stupid crap they put in there, it's not going to fly. But I was in Hi-Fi. I was checking out Hi-Fi the other day, and uh, wow, they have gotten really far, really far. Um, NPCs, you name it. I don't think they have pathfinding yet, but uh, pretty much everything else is there. It's ready to go. Besides, it doesn't have, you know, content security. So, and I, I've yeah, heard actually, a little bit about that too. But it's... does it allow you to actually use it for real without a VR headset? Oh yeah, they they are not real. I mean they. In their videos and stuff, they seem very VR focused, but you can go in there with a the desktop. You can do pretty much most of the things that the VR people can do. You can shake their hand. Everything that they implemented, they also implemented for the desktop users. Yeah, like Aki said, is there native chats or do you need to go mod it? You know, I don't. The, I was in there the other day. I didn't use any chat. So. I'm not sure. I don't want to say there is, but because um, we're all using voice. But um, I got a little bit of a demo on a bunch of different things, and uh, I was super impressed. I mean, I'm, I've kind of been watching it. But the bad thing about it is there's no content security. Now, I asked them about it, and, of course, nobody really wanted to tell me exactly what they're going to do because Philip has been talking about it. But um, I'm guessing here, don't take anything I say here as fact, but it sounds to me like what they want to do, I wish they would just open up a server and let us put stuff on it, but whatever. Um, what they want to do is they want to take some of these places like um, Sketchfab, where you can put a model on there and sell it, or even, I think, probably Turbo Squid. But they're going to be the security. So all the links or whatever will go to those products. So if somebody buys it off like Sketchfab, then Sketchfab will hold the security so that other servers can view the model. Which, I don't know. I kind of don't like that. But anyways, that's what I heard. Hi, Beck. See you later, Beck. You have a blessing. Yeah, I, I understand that content is, is uh, security is always going to be an issue, but you can't just do what they 
initially did, which was just putting everything, you just throw your model onto a website with a URL. And it, I mean, anybody could do it. And the problem with, you know, this is why I think they, they need to just put everything on a server, is that's HiFi's business model. Just like everybody else, they're going to try and make money off us. Well, how are you going to make money off us if the content's not secure? You know? Because then everybody can root them off and resell it and make their own money off of it. Yeah. Right, exactly. It doesn't make any sense. So, yeah. I guess it's because making money is kind of like a side effect of playing the game. It's not the main focus. A side effect? <laughs> it's there to have fun, enjoy it, look at it, fondle it, and like have fun. If you make money, you, you sound money. like one of them new prescription pill commercials. This solves headaches, but may cause anal leakage, nosebleeds, hematitis, hemorrhoids, and prolapsed anuses. Contact your doctor if you have an erection that lasts over six hours. <laughs> yeah, but you'll feel good during that six hours, wouldn't you? You'd be like, wow. The prolapse asshole? I don't think so. I think if my O ring blew out, I would not be a happy camper. Hey, if this Imagine walking to the doctor's office as your colon does the quick walk down the aisle. I mean, it'd be embarrassing. <laughs> Well, me personally, I don't care how good the virtual world is. I don't care how good Sansar is. I don't care how good High Fidelity is. Unless the company that owns those those products, Linden Lab or, or uh, Philip and his group, unless they actually prime the pump and pay content creators to create content long enough to where you get users in there to buy it, to sustain an economy, it ain't going to take off. I've seen other virtual worlds that were technically much better than Second Life, but they didn't support the content users by paying them to create content to reach a critical mass of of users, of, of buyers, to where it just never took off. Not just creators, but just having products for people to buy. Um, well, but we're going to have to see somebody to make those, though. It's funny that you say that, though, because Sansar is running a promo right now. Uh, they're giving away like 30 grand or something like that. 10 grand to the first prize person to create an experience in Sansar. I think it's $1,000 for the, the craziest object or something like that. Well, they don't want me to create the craziest object because I'll tell you what. Well, I mean, right, anybody well, can take an object and then put the bevel modifier on it and then set the divisions to, like, eight. Make a 20 million polygon object. That's, that's a great start for Linden Lamb to do that for Sansar, but, I mean, they, they're going to have to support it for six months, maybe a couple of years, uh, the content and creators paying them to yeah, create yeah. all sorts of different experiences and different objects for people to buy. In order to get res, you know, users in there, enough of them to to buy enough of this stuff uh, to create an actual economy. I, I think it's way too to early think. too. Like, what are, oh, yeah, what right. are people, people right. going to create? It's just to walk around, res some objects, you know, some kind of simple code scripts. It's, I don't understand what the point of giving somebody thirty grand for that is. <laughs> when they could totally be using that money here in Second Life. It's because they want to push something new that's going to grab the new generation of children that play PC games. But the thing Second Life don't realize, right, is these younger generations are going to expect more for free. That's the way they're raised, the millennials. If you look at people that are from the age bracket of 22-ish and below, they have very different lives than when we grew up gaming. When we were gaming, we played... Goddamn, Pac-Man, Castlevania, games that would punish you relentlessly until you got that thing you wanted. Hang on, hang I didn't on. play Second Life when it first came out, Second Life punishes but I played other punishes games punishes. that were MMOs. But, but the way kids are these days, right? If they were to go to Sansar, they'd be like, they would look at it as EA. They would look at the new Second Lives, a.k.a. Sansar, 
as being kind of like EA on the PlayStation and Xbox Network. Oh, you gave me this wonderful thing to play in, but I want that nice thing, and now you're going to make me spend 40 bucks. That's how they'll look at it, and it'll be an automatic turnoff. They'll think it's just another money grab, just like all them games are on console. So when they log in and they try to do all this, they're going to to hell with this. I'll go play something else. I got PC games. Bye. And that's why they're looking for creators to draw the younger crowd in to make them feel kind of cushy like they got something for free and slowly start sliding that in. Hey, buy this. Hey, buy that. And then the kids that are smart are going to catch on and be like, nah, bro, I'm out. And they don't need to take that approach. They need to have it to where it feels like you're somewhere that is completely open and completely new and your imagination is a limit. Whereas with SL, that's the way it's supposed to be. But with the outdated infrastructure that they use for the game itself, it limits you very much so on what you can create and how far you can take it. You know, like even upgrading the servers to a lot better hardware will make it a lot easier on people as far as having their own personal sim with beautiful trees and beautiful objects. It wouldn't become bogged down because your neighbor on the same server that's on his own private sim decides to randomly res out 3,000 dildos that are scripted as he's shooting them at his buddy with the penis gun. It wouldn't happen anymore because it wouldn't cause lag on the server, the server, you know, rail itself. It would only lag them out. You know? Yes. And it would make it, you know, better for everybody. And also, if they were to implement a way for the game to be able to better utilize newer hardware, that would make this game immensely better for everybody across the board. Even people with two- and three-year-old computers, if you could utilize it as much as possible, across the board, everybody would be happy. Because, like World of Warcraft, back until three years ago, World of Warcraft was only using dual-core processors a lot similar to Second Life. And then World of Warcraft said, hey guys, the game's going down for two days. When we bring it back, it's going to perform a thousand percent better. And when they brought it back, it can support up to 16 CPUs and three GPUs all at once and fully utilize them. You know? But like SL, they could, you know, say, hey, it's going down for a day. It'll be up tomorrow. GG, call it good. They have enough people working for them in California. They have a task force in California that's 3,000 people strong. Not to mention there are other caveat offices that are around the world that can also implement it and inject it on their server side where people log in on the portal side. It wouldn't be that hard. They have the manpower. Those types of games are very different than a virtual world because these things are not um, running on your computer. The graphics are, but that's about it. The graphics well, on the interface, that's it. Well, World of Warcraft is running on their servers and just your no, their graphics are running on yours. Yeah. Most, most of the game code is running on your computer when the, and then it's just sending messages to the network, through the network, to their server. The game code is running on your computer. All right, Desire, you take it easy. You have a blessed one. Sorry if we bugged you about talking. With World of Warcraft, it's made as a game where SL is not is made as a general purpose kind of platform. Well, well, that's true. But when you log into SL, right, the reason you have a texture cache and an object cache is because you're downloading the files from the game of recent places you have been. If they were designed a way to make that permanent to where it stayed, then yes, that's you could run all the game's assets from your computer. You could. It's it's fairly permanent. You have a uh, a cache that's that's uh, you know of things that you've seen already. But I mean, you know, when somebody somewhere across the world uploads a, another thing, then there's no reason for you to have it, unless I mean, the, I've heard the asset server is you know petabytes. Yeah, but uh, something's going on when I have to continuously download the same texture. Okay, so it's not holding. Um, I think the it's relevant just load load from the cache. Right, and that's usually when I see uh, lag issues and stuff like that. It's always textures. It's always the, uh, textures loading. The graphics card can only hold so much memory, so it has to swap it out. But that's my point, is that if when we talk about efficiency, 
you know, we 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 almost step around the whole texture thing. It's always textures. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of it is 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 like you said, you know, uh, a 1024 uh, texture on a coffee cup or a 1024, you know, texture on a diamond ring. Exactly. It, it, it's not. I mean, the SL can't do anything about that. That's that's content creators. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. We're living it's only using 512 megabits of your video RAM. I have a 12 gig card that's water cooled. A second life were to let me fully utilize my 12 gigabytes of VRAM, I would breeze through here like a hot knife through butter. I would be gone. I'd be good. Places would load like instantly. There wouldn't be the looking at this weird gray jelly with weird square boobies that's floating in front of my face while I'm waiting to get out the welcome area of an event, well, which is always is loading. It would help for people to stop putting massively over-detailed textures. Yeah, it, it, well, it's massively over-detailed meshes. It's it's just everybody wants pretty things. And well, you get pretty without going over the top. Though. I mean, I mean, you can't you can't compare it to World of Warcraft or some professionally made game because they have a, a certain budget and they know they it's all controlled. They have a certain polygon budget, and texture budget. They know what's going going to happen at any time. Whereas SL is made by a bunch of amateurs, basically, that that don't have that. Wow. Well, don't but, that. But what I'm saying is, but what well, I'm saying I, is, I, I, I did like, hesitate to say that, but it is. I mean, six, um, well, the people who own Second of, Life, anybody since can it's, it. well, since Second Life came out, right? If you look at Second Life's takeaway after taxes worldwide, they've made over four point two billion dollars. Forbes magazine keeps track of it. Uh, SL, the people, Linden Labs who own Second Life could make this experience a lot better. They have the money. They made billions off this game. They, they could. One, one, of the problems, make millions. one of the problems I, I know is a problem because I work with code all the time is you're, you're almost, you're talking about, it's like working on a super, uh, a super highway that you can't shut down. You can't, you can't shut SL down. I mean, sure, you could shut it down for a couple of days, but, but, that's not going to work. It's got to be worked on as it's running. Well, they could. And that's just like and and so for one thing. No, it's not. You're, that, well, they no, do it. it they no. do it in other games. No, they shut down one server. They say all servers shutting down in this region for one hour, and they work on that server and upgrade it. Then they go to the next block of server. Hey, the server's shutting down. They could do it incrementally, just like they do rolling restarts. That's right. not an excuse. And, and they also have the viewer side, so you can't you can't break the viewer, you know, from the the server. That they have to be in sync. And and I mean, I know from experience that there's a lot of people that they they don't, you know, oh, I'm using a, a year old viewer, you know. But they could they could shut down servers and server blades incrementally, and upgrade the infrastructure and the coding, and, and then move and to they, the next. They do do that. You know, that's what Tuesdays are all about with the rolling restarts. We're rolling restarts. All they do is hit the power button on the server blade and turn it back no, on. No, that's, that's, when up, that's when updates are performed. You can go on the, the uh, wiki and look at what they've updated. I just they came in as years ago. That's why, and a lot that's why a, uh, um, a Tuesday restarts usually take about twenty minutes. Whereas, uh, you know, if you just restart your sim, that's you know probably thirty seconds. That is true. But yeah. I think ultimately before a game can really uh, work well in Second Life, yeah, I mean, the efficiency things need to be addressed. And they're obviously trying to do that. Um, but again, I think there needs to be more education, especially on the texture side. You know, I do a lot of videos and I try and push efficiency, but you know, I don't think I have one on textures yet, but uh, I mean that's really the issue, and I nobody ever talks about it too. How yeah, well, there, there's no way to stop it. Used, there's really no way to stop it. Um, yeah, maybe they can make uh, uh, the bigger the texture cost more or something. Um, I wouldn't want to suggest that though. Rover was just typing. 
You reminded me of old Looney Tunes when they're sneaking past something in the shadows and making that little da -da 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 noise when they're running. That's what that sounded like. Who was just typing? <laughs> no, it's awesome. Exo, it's Exo's typer. It's hilarious. I keep seeing, like, Mickey Mouse running across trying to sneak past Blue or something. Oh. Well, you gotta remember, like, I guess when my generation of Second Lifers came in and we were creating, everything was 512, and then we were taught, like, why 512 was the low quality one. If you want the high quality, then it's 1024 by 1024. So that just kind of stuck with us. Like even now, I'm I'm totally guilty of that. That's because that's what I was told when I was learning how to build. That 512 is the basic and the lower version or low quality. 1024 is the high quality. So you always want to make your stuff high quality and do the 1024. Yeah, see, I rarely, I so rarely up upload a 1024 texture. It's I, it almost never even crosses my mind to do that unless it's going to be a large uh, thing on my screen. So it depends how how many pixels across the actual. Yeah. Um, or I mean, I even try to uh, unless I'm packing multiple objects into a single texture. My whole elephant is one texture. One. Uh, 1024 by 1024. Same thing with this Cobra. Um, but I, I don't even make separate eyes for it because I don't see the point, you know? Right. That is definitely something to think about from now on. Somebody, well, somebody what, had an uh, idea of simply tying the texture to the actual size of the object. So if it's something like a, a ring, that's very small, then the lab could detect that size and then automatically resample the texture lower. Uh, Without frustrating the sir. I'm surprised they don't do that already. Um, as they kind of uh, on the graphics card. Yeah, I think they, I think they might do that on the graphics card. Uh, with the map well, they do do it for distance. I don't know about size. Uh, I think that I think it's the same thing. This is the size of the really same things, but you know, number of pixels on your screen, uh, the bounding box. Of course, if they ever allow us to do that. Uh, add a slider to change the scale of the avatar so you can make your avatar the size of the mouse or the size of a giant. Uh, you wouldn't want the textures to be resampled because you can make a dollhouse on your land and live in the dollhouse. I once did try to make a scale uh, sim where everything was smaller and then only tiny avatars could go through. You know, I wonder if you could have, uh, and then you get a much larger sim. Uh, yeah, the problem is once you go, once you get so small, um, your avatar still moves. Step, yeah, you know, when you yeah. take a step, it still moves, so you end up shooting the, across the, the room. The collision doesn't work as correctly either. Right, right. We talked to Veer about that. Um, uh, that maybe if they. Did allow us to add an, uh, a scale slider to the appearance editor. Uh, that that's something that would need to be addressed in order to make tiny avatars, um, uh, you know, really small avatars that would open up a whole new world. Uh, an LSL it. function for uh, walk speed would be nice. Walk and um, speed. I have a question for y'all. If any y'all know about Pinto. Do y'all build with Vento? I like do things with Vento. Some of us dabble in the arts. You're in there. Yeah, I'm uh, maybe down oh. there. I have Vento animations for wings. How do I make them automatically activate when you put the wings on? Script. That's a scripting yeah, here, thing. That's a one. scripting thing. I'm in the wings and have a script. Yeah. To, uh, uh, they are adding that to AO so. with supplemental animations. So I have to build an AO that plays the animation, is that what you're saying? Uh, no, not necessarily. I'm just saying they, they are adding that to the AO. Uh, 
the current. But you could. Reality. You could but use you could, an animal. Yeah, you could, yeah. Um, but you would have to, yeah, you'd need a script that would play that animation. There you go. Um, yeah, and actually, I'm kind of against them doing this whole supplemental thing because we already have a way to play the animations. I don't understand why they're doing it. Well, but, they're talking about the they're talking about the, the AL functions and LSL. I don't, a lot of uh, um, ALs don't even use that the animation override functions in LSL. Right, um, right, right. And it so would be like bad the, the too in many that, cases. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm using it right now. Um, the the anime, the AL that I have right now is uh, one I made myself. Um, it's one script, almost zero script time, um, and I, I just took the uh, the animations that I I got from my the AO that I purchased. Um, I think it's from Vista. And I stuck them in this object and, and made my own AO script. Uh, yep. So yeah, it does. It doesn't have the uh, doesn't have the, the the functionality that theirs did. Uh, to play, you know, different dances or whatever, but um, I, I don't use that anyway. So, yeah, and it's much, it's much, much cleaner. Yeah. But um, it, it's it, the other problems just make it somewhat unusable. Well, what problems? Well, the supplemental part. If you try and play, like I can't play another animation over top using that system. And that's where the supplemental comes in. Right. But and to me, to what is the point of doing that when we can just play a regular animation function? The, the point of doing it state. is because when the script has to basically, the, the other AO scripts that don't use the, the LSL AO functions, they have to constantly watch what you are doing on a, a very swift timer. So to see if you are walking, they have to, they're, they're constantly polling to see what you're doing. And or, or they're taking your controls, which that, that triggers a lot of events as well. Um, so those scripts are gonna those scripts are gonna take more script time on a sim. Whereas my AO, I mean, I can actually detach my this my the AO that I have, and like I'll here I'll detach it right now. So I've I've just detached it, and in my it my AO sticks. I could res this AO box as you ground, as you've changed the defaults. Yeah, I've changed. Yeah, right, right. So now that that my AO takes zero script time. It's not using another script and and zero zero lag. Right. So like these uh, these animation override scripting hooks, do they like basically override the priority animation of animations or something? No, they they basically say your de this is now your default walking animation. This is now your right. default they running animation. Right. Uh, they changed the default walk, run, everything. Right. Yeah. Why is this? I'm not sure I understand why this isn't a good idea. It is a good idea. I don't know. I don't know why. Who, who wouldn't? The, the, the it is. The yeah. older AOs, yeah. the older AOs basically had to run a timer, and it's like every timer tick, it's saying, you know, it's checking, are you running? Are you walking? Are you jumping? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Are you doing that? And, and if you are doing that, then play this animation. So that runs a lot of script time. Um, with this with this new system that came out, I don't know, within a year and a half or so ago, um, I don't know how many AO makers are, are using that because I haven't bought an AO in, in forever. So. Pretty sure most people are still using modified Zao scripts. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, see, and those those do not use that. Um, there is a there is a modified Zao uh, on the wiki, open source. Go go. Copy paste it right now and and, and throw your uh, note card. Go throw your note card and your animations in an object, and you've got your own lag free AO. Because I know my Vinto AO from Vista, right? Sometimes when I walk, it won't trigger automatically, and my dude just goes bumbling across the sim with his legs spread apart, just sliding like he's doing a super moon walk forward. It's ridiculous, and then it won't activate. Yeah, and uh, the um, those older AOs will also if if a sim is lagging severely, then it's kind of uh, embarrassing when you're wearing a sexy man thong and you walk around like a corn cob stuck up your butt. It's not cute, and it ruins the atmosphere. So if uh, a sim is lagging, then um, uh, most people don't uh, don't understand that a sim the, the probably a lot of people here are old, so they remember that. 
when a sim would lag, everything would just run in slow motion. You would walk in slow motion, things would move in slow motion. I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, I go in there, like, with that song on, like, looking at that body, and then everybody's looking at me like, look at that potato, and I'm like, hashtag they feelings hurt. not still do uh, time dilation? They, they, they do, but they do it in a different way. Um, scripts are now don't contribute to time dilation. They are so so basically on a sim, all scripts run quote unquote simultaneously. But that doesn't there's no there's no such thing as simultaneous in uh, on the server. So what happens is each script runs for a small time slice, and then it moves to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Now, let's say you have a thousand scripts on the, on a sim. If you can only get through 400 of them before the next frame, um, what it used to do was just slow that frame down and make it la make that frame last until I got done with the thousand scripts, and then and that's where time dilation would come in. That doesn't happen anymore. Now they they run the 400 scripts, and then the frame changes to the next one, and then when the when it comes to running scripts again, they start at 401 and, and run however many they can. And then when the frame is done, that they put a marker there. And, and so scripts are now lagging at a different rate than, than the, the rest of the sim. So time dilation is no longer a, or frames per second, is no longer a... Um, good measure of, of how your scripts are running on the sim. In some ways, that's kind of good, though. It is a good thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. But uh, as far um, as far as script, now I'm a scripter, so it's not a good thing for me because um, the 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 sim won't appear to be lagging when it really is. Now I have a a meter on my uh, HUD right now, telling me how well scripts are running, <clears throat> and you can actually see this in the uh, in the st uh, the stats window. If you uh, where is it under sim, you can look at there's a scripts run section. It says I mean here it says 100 percent 99 but um, you can get to a, a you know a sim that's a, a laggy and, and look at scripts run and it will be down you know 40 percent whereas the time dilation will say you know 99 percent but that's really the bottleneck on every sim and it's a huge bottleneck really like uh, i can have uh i am i probably have so many prims left over on my land. It, it's ridiculous. I yeah, mean, me too. Me too, especially since they added the new ones. But I can't add one more script. <laughs> well, then you're... See, now, I've I've pretty much written every script on my sim, so I know what everything... I mean, even down... Except for the vendors. Um, so I know what they're doing, and I... I, I mean, I will work... You know, I'll, I'll spend a day trying to shave off a few microseconds on the script. So I know that, that what the time, how much I mean, each, uh, script time. Right? Mine's not too bad because most of the code written in, uh, for my products was done by my coder, um, who was really good, but um, not all of them. So, but the, and even the, still, I, I mean, that's the one thing I, you know, I have. The bottleneck to think I see is a uh, number of avatars on a sim. Um, you know, I get I get thirty avatars, twenty you know, twenty five, thirty avatars on a sim, and everything's gonna lag. It's gonna because scripts they get whatever's left of the time. So now, if um, if a sim has to take a lot of time processing those avatars, scripts get what's left. They get the scraps. But. What like what you're saying is it's not really the avatars; it's the scripts that come along with them too. No, it it is the avatars. Um, the uh, and I don't I don't understand why exactly because if you look on the um, the simulator stats, 
um, under time. There is a net time and a physics time. The, uh, the net time will shoot way up uh, when there's a lot of avatars on a sim. So it's taking, all, it's taking a lot of processing time to send out the updates to avatars. The more avatars you have, the more updates it has to send out. Um, and and it's, it's, it's exponential because, uh, you know, you got two avatars on a sim, then that has to send out uh, four pieces of information. Now you get, you get six and you got to, you know... Well, well, that'll be interesting to see how the NPCs work out then. Like, what's their going to impact? If, if um, an avatar... oh, I, I, already, I actually if... already know what their impact is going to be because I have NPCs. I have NPCs on my sim right now, and um, they uh, they do take extra net time, but not the kind of time that an avatar does. Now, what do you mean you have NPCs, though? I have NPCs. I mean, I okay, so I make a game that is uh, basically to um, kill NPCs. Um, I make weapons that to, to do that and a HUD for, for playing the game. But what are they made out of? They, they are made out of prims. Um, With a script to move them around. A script to yeah. move them around. I have one script that moves them around, does a lot of a uh, um, lot of AI kind of stuff. Uh, yes, it's yes, it's the zombie killing sims. Yep. Are you so, are you utilizing pathfinding? I don't. No, I make my own pathfinding because I don't. The the uh, I tried to use their pathfinding. Um, for one thing, I sell the product. So, and a lot of times the uh, the uh, people that buy it are not. Um, content creators, nor are they some of the, the most intelligent people in SL. Um, so, <laughs> just, I was trying to put that easily, but it does seem every time a group buys the system, um, it is the person who can't stick two prims together is the one with the money. <clears throat> so I end up helping them set their whole place up. But the, the, with pathfinding, you have to you have to set you know I want this road as walkable, and this is a, a static obstacle. Nobody does that. Yeah, but I thought they changed it. See, I haven't played with it in a while. No, it's still the same. They changed it so that it was automatic. Uh, if you're if you're on the ground, great. Ground is right, walkable. Right, right. But yeah, I, you got to set things as if it's a, a um, if it's a movable obstacle. Then it doesn't work as well. You got to set things as static obstacle or walkable. You know, if you've got prims on top of your land, then you've got to set those prims to to walkable or your pathfinding. Right, right. right. There is a, a, a of range setup. of things that are on your land that you, that, that a computer can't know how to set it. Yeah. No. Now, now, uh, creators could you know say you buy a house, they could. Um, they could pre-set up that that pathfinding um, before you know when they when they build it and then sell it, and those pathfinding uh, details will stay with it. Um, well, I've used it. I was in the pathfinding beta. Um, yeah, me too. I because um, I, I thought it was going to be the best thing for me. Um, now, once I started using it, I, I the <clears throat> the pathfinding uses the physics engine. And um, I have basically coded out the physics engine completely because it is so laggy. It, it lags so bad. So I, I've gotten rid of using physics. Um, I used to just move the things by physics, and, and now it's all non-physical. Um, uh, bullets are non-physical. Everything I've gone, everything with non-physical because physics lags a sim terribly. I mean, that's yeah, why yeah. You know, griefers use physical... Well, that's too bad, though. That's too bad that you couldn't use Pathfinder, because... See, I we made a combat game a while back, okay? My before Pathfinder's a little better. Yeah, yeah, and we did um, our own little, like, Pathfinding thing, too. And I still have them on my sim. I still shoot them and kill them and whatever. Um, and they're not that bad, but it does use physics, 
But I can't yeah. put more than, you know, 10, 15 of them on my lamp. Exactly, because of the physics. See, I can have, um, I mean, I've, I've had 200. Um, normally, um, I have, you know, with, uh, with, when you get a lot of avatars, uh, yeah, I've had, I've had well over 200. Now, if it's an empty, if it's just me and, and, uh, um, I can have two, three, five hundred. Um, once you get, you start adding other avatars onto the sim, then it's, uh, that, that's, that changes. And now I'm running, I've made my own animation script that animates these objects um, because we never, you know, we don't have any way to animate them. <clears throat> uh, three quarters of the script time on them goes towards animating them. Moving a prim in a link set is expensive. The farther you move it, the more expensive it is. So what do you, um, uh, what, what would you suggest about pathfinding to change it to make it more usable? Well, I understand why they do it the way they do it, because that's the way it's done. Um, that's the way all games do it. Unity does it that way. Unreal, you name it. They, they make a, a nav mesh. Um, and... So there really is no other better way to do it than the way they are doing it. <clears throat> um, but it's not user-friendly. Uh, but I, I don't know that there is a better way. Yeah, it, seem, it just seems um, sad that we that here's this great thing. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was good. We can't use I it. I thought it would be. I thought it would be the greatest thing that, um, for me. And... Uh, I was all excited and uh, did not pan out, so I've made my own. And that is I, true, because it's just like World of Warcraft. When you take a griffin to the next fly point, it does the same way that SL does. It looks for the target yeah. location, yeah. looks for it's the a parse. Star, a star oh. search is the way mm -hmm. that finding is done. And it finds the grits the same way. Yeah, the the um, if you're making a game, you use you know there is a nav mesh that is created. Um, so uh, now, now they 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 could probably do some better automatic nav mesh creating um, because well I, I'm not even sure that that's possible even I mean, you do have to state you know maybe that will require could, them not to be in Sansar. <laughs> they could. Uh, they could make the pathfinding so that it's just a checkbox on the build window that you know to set it as walk, you know, or, or something. So you don't have to open this whole big old link set thing. That takes right. forever to load. Yeah, that takes forever to load. I mean, if it was just a little, you know, a drop down uh, wind thing on the build window that you know you set it as uh, a static obstacle or, or movable obstacle or or whatever you want to put it at, then that would be that's the way to make it easier. And then I bet you more people would use it. But this whole huge ass link set thing that takes forever to load and, and Right and, and then you've got, you know, most of your things on your sim are named object. Um, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder if um, if a creator pushed it. They really wanted to use it. They really, you know, and they pushed it. If, you know, the the uh, community would, uh, or at least parts of it. I think a third-party viewer uh, people could do it. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or I, I wonder if the, it just couldn't be if, if you... I mean, that's just interface. Put more education out there to show people, you know, maybe because... Yeah, Education doesn't work. Couple, I have a I couple mean. clients that that are all about the NPCs, you know, and they're that's all why I'm here. That's why I started coming to these. It's because of this. I heard about this NPC thing, and that that I mean, I that's what I do. I mean, I I can't res these things now because there's no res here. But um, the, I have animation. I've I've made an animation script that uses basically, um, you know, treats prims like bones and. Um, <laughs> And I can do a, a hierarchical animation. 
I think I think it'll be interesting, but it'll be sad to see the NPCs put out without us using pathfinding. It's just but you can still use it. There's there's absolutely no reason. I mean, um, you just play the animation and 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 you know walk. I mean, you can yeah, you can check to see how fast the, the um, NPCs are moving and play the appropriate animation. I wonder if. Like, if people use this uh, or use the pathfinding strictly as, like, for pets, okay, so the, uh, av- or the NPC is near an avatar all the time or is being somewhat pushed around the, the sim along with this avatar, um, if that scenario would work out better than just a, you know, NPC roaming around. Yeah, you you um you do need some wandering though, right? You know? right. Um, the, the way I do it is since my my NPCs are always chasing somebody or they're wandering. They do do, do a um um you know some if there are no one near they do wander. Now if they're chasing someone, <clears throat> they use the intelligence of the person since they I do have some. They do have some vision, so that they use ray casting for vision. To, but it's basically a one-dimensional ray, um, so they can only see in one dimension, which just stops them from walking through a wall. Um, but they don't know where a door is, or if that person that they're chasing runs around a corner. If they're going straight towards that person, they're going to run into that wall. So what they do is they watch. They watch where the person is running and keep track, and they follow that path if they can't see the person directly. So they're using the path of the avatar. I got something to ask y'all. Like, I came over to the other sim over there, but at Linden Labs, dude, that has all the lights us. Um, he's got objects over there that show true reflections of things over there. You know, what I saw... Here? I saw that, mirrors, too, and I was wondering how the hell they do that. I saw what, some that, that as, as don't the mirrors work in, like, no, mirrors? That's not, that's not a mirror. That's not a mirror. That He's doing some trickery, and I, I was actually wondering how that is done myself. Um, because I know the water in SL reflects you. I'm wondering if you could script an object to have the same mannerisms as water in SL, because the water in SL does reflect whatever's above it. It shows the actual true reflection of you moving. Yeah. Or wait, an object, the same damn thing. That's a shader. That's uh, the water is a special shader that's built into the viewer that's not accessible to. They'll never do it. We've already talked about it. Yeah. Well, well, they, you know said they, they said uh, they'd never do uh, you know animated rig mesh that isn't attached as well too. And now they're doing it. So, I mean, I remember Oz saying uh, he'll, uh, he'll never. I remember Oz saying it'll never happen. Well, I, it wasn't even very long ago. I remember being oh, in it. Uh, so was, there's some things in a game, and it can be done, then it can be replicated. Hmm. That got me curious now. I'm thinking about breaking up my viewer and watch scripts running whenever I walk through the water and watch the channel talk on the chatter. I've, I've, GPU. Seen, I've seen people uh, modify the viewer to ch- take the water shader and, and swap it with the, uh, the um, shiny. No, no. I'm talking about running a packet source code watch. Well, I can watch packets going from the water to my viewer to the visualization no, and snag. Doesn't doesn't, there's no packets. No, the water is not doing that. Well, well yeah, because whenever you, whenever you walk over water, right, there has to be a process where the engine for Second Life speaks to your viewer and says, hey, you're no, over the water no, at this no, point. This no, is what no, you no, see. No, no, no. It's, just, it's, a, it's a mesh with a shader on it. There has to be a way that shader correlates to speaking to your viewer for you to realize what you're looking at. There has to be a way that your GPU is going, okay, load your reflection at this point, you wiggled your arm. Okay, no, now you're going to wiggle your arm again. Has to be a, way. Object, a special type of object that has that shader on it that the viewer knows about. Um, the, water, there's, the water is just a... The, the only thing that's being sent to the viewer is telling the water what level to set the water level at. All right. On this. Um, but, but, the, the water oh. is a special type of object, basically, in the viewer. Well, if it's in the viewer, it can be broke. 
Yes, it can. I've seen people do it. You you just swap the the, uh, the water shader with the uh, um, shiny shader, and then you've got reflection. Any, anytime, anything that you set to uh, uh, you know high high shiny then gets the uh, reflections on it. It's not the same reflections of the water. Whenever yes, you take yes, an object yes, to put, is the same reflection of the water. Then if that's true, then you would see a reflection in the mirror. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's true. You do. Um, it's a it's a special modified. You know, you got to modify your viewer to do it, but it's not it's not standard. I've just I've seen people do it. But then you lose your high shine. That's what I'm saying. It needs to be standard. Yeah. Um, a lot of people in SL are not using um, the latest hardware out there. Uh, in fact, uh, my experience is a lot of people are using very old computers in SL. I mean, come on, I play D&D &D online, Dungeons & Dragons online. It's older than SL, and it has reflection. You can walk up to a mirror, and you can see your reflection. Yeah. And that uh, game is old as... I think Methuselah wrote the coding for it. Right, but that's... Uh, so the thing is, you give people mirrors, and they're going to use them everywhere. You know, you're going to have a whole mirror structure. You know, you're going to have a whole freaking house. There's a room full of mirrors, and the people go stand in it. Uh, you'll That's have a house why they mirror. won't ever do it. Right. See, every time they every time they add something, they have to think of how is this going to. First of all, how am I, how are people going to abuse this thing? And, and that's why we don't have good stuff. Is because everything can be used. To yeah, well, well, then I'll abuse. be blunt. If you can be a fudo with a four foot penis and eighty four inch titties with muscles the size of Lou Ferrigno's waist, then you should be able to have reflection in the mirror. Um, yeah, they just, uh, for whatever reason, I think, uh, mirrors is not a priority, and, um, they, they, Let me imagine, like, a particle the show. Impact. You go to a particle show, correct? Because my friend Cole, Cole Marie, her and her partner in RL do particles, and they make really brilliant particle shows, and they're really good at it. But wouldn't it be great if you could have, like, a particle show that everybody could sit in a skybox and watch and enjoy? And, and let's say some of the particles have lasers from them, and they go from mirror to mirror and make a design in the sky that slowly fades away. That would be awesome, you know? I mean, it'd be something cool. I mean, it'd add a little bit of afterglow as the effects are going off. Well, I mean, there's thing, lots uh, of... One thing is, when you, when you see certain things in games, they're not doing what you think they're doing. It's all fakery. It's all fakery. Uh, there's, there's, no, there's, there's, certainly no, there's certainly no mirror. There's certainly no mirror in a game that actually reflects light, like a laser beam. I want to walk That's around with testicles like disco balls that actually refract light. I would like to be able to do that if I so choose to. Yeah, just walk around and you know, just right. bebop around with you can disco balls. In my, yeah, right. it'd be awesome. I mean, it'd be a party right. in my pants, literally. Well, what what I'm saying is, if you see that in a game. The way they're doing it is not the way it works in real life. They're not reflecting. Light I completely the understand that. They're faking it. So now you can fake that. You can fake that with a uh, um, a projection map in SL right now. I, mean, I know you can take lights and set a texture inside the light, and yeah. you put the prim above the ground, and it shows the image on the ground as a light. That's and it's kind of like. Put you and put you could four of those, put four of those in a ball and then have, uh, you know, look like a, it's reflecting a mirror ball. There you go. No, you know you know what I want? I want to be like in a gym lit club with hip hop music and a chick walk by with a flashlight and shine it my direction and it's like, hallelujah, and lights just go everywhere. Yeah. You it's like, yeah, the, 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 me. The it would be awesome. To actually bounce light like that. Do you know how many lindens we get thrown at my face? It would be epic. <laughs> yeah, that's just... It won't work like that. It, they, it, things in games don't work like you think they work. They don't work like they do in real life. Anything, it's all fakery. They, they rename my. The, they have to do the fakery because they're not ray tracing light. Well, you could. More, more and more, though, things are starting to reflect things that are in, in real life, like PBR. You know, and even yeah, in, yeah, I, yeah. I saw in Hi Fi they had uh, an actual flashlight. So, um, yeah, but it doesn't reflect off a mirror. Well, I don't know, but <laughs> probably not, yeah. <laughs>
So I'm saying, if you bounce a laser beam off a mirror in any game, it, what it's doing is not what you think it's doing, because that... Yeah. In World of Warcraft, when you walk by, like, a shiny object like crystals and stuff that reflect light, it will reflect the light up to the top of the room. And as it gets further away, it gets dimmer. Yeah, you can do that in a video game. Yeah, but I'm saying... All you have to do is code it. Um, yeah, I'm just saying it's not working like you think it's working. You know, it's not working like the way it is working in, in real life. I mean, it'd be cool to have a real flashlight that's so, you know, like, make a haunted house where, like, where you walk, it only shines light and lights up that area. You can do it'd that. Be really you know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You just put a, you you just go, put a projection map on your, you know, a spot. A spot well, I understand a projection map. I understand that. I'm talking about, like, you're walking through a dank cave and your flashlight hits water on the bottom of the cave and it gives ambient light in the cave and lights up the water a little bit where you can see through it. And then as you walk past it, it goes dimmer because you're not reflecting light off the ground anymore where the water lights. Oh, uh, yeah, you're talking about real-time global illumination. The, the reason they can do that is because things are pre-calculated. You can't do that in SL. Things aren't pre-calculated. There's no, because I can, you know, I can move a building anytime I want. Whereas that cave in that game is, is there. It's there forever. It's not moving. Unless it moves, then they know it moves. Well, Sansar's not going to work that way. Yeah, they're, they're pre-baking stuff. And, and I mean, I wish they would do that in SL. They could, I mean, there's no reason they couldn't because they could pre-bake a sim or a parcel and, um, you know, if maybe you set things as, you know, movable or whatever. Um, I mean, it'd be a huge project, but... I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see how it pans out in Sansar, because uh, I kind of look at it as a pain in the ass. I mean, there's definitely benefits to it, but... Um... Well, see, the thing is, right now, so when an object moves behind another object, um, you know, like in Sansar and in other games that, that compute visibility, it knows that that thing is, move, is, behind, is fully behind that object, and it doesn't have to render that object. Well, SL has to do that computation on the fly. Um, you, if you go to the developer section... We have, you have, have a occlusion. Data. Don't we yeah, have a there, there is occlusion, but it's not, it's not perfect. Um, and um, it, and it, it's doing it on the fly. It's doing it you know, every frame. And whereas most games will pre-compute that kind of thing. One of um, in the Hive in the Hive headset, there's a game... And it does real-time light comp computation because they're like this hammer. You walk around with a hammer, right? And you can smash different crystals, and they'll break into millions of shards. But it depends on which trajectory you hit it at, which way the shards break and flip-flop. And they refract light. And they do it on the fly. I mean, it can be done. It just takes yeah. a lot of work. Yeah. The, the graphics engine in SL is... Um, I mean, this seriously needs to be updated. And I don't... You know, I mean, they could do that through the viewer. I mean, that's... It's a viewer thing. Um, I don't know why they didn't use a third-party engine. Yeah, they did. They used the same third-party engine that they used. Um, the one that this one has right now is the same gra physics engine that the original Portal had in it, made by the same developers. Yep, sure was. Well, that'd be the source engine, then. Mm, it sure is. It's called the Havoc engine. That's the physics engine SL uses. Oh, yeah, Havoc. Right, yeah, Havoc. Uh, you know, and the thing is, Havoc can do so much more than what... It can, it's just that, like the itty-bitty version of it, not the full-on real know, version. I've like, seen, seen Havoc so. things, you know, you can have tornadoes and crazy stuff with Havoc, and... That's not doesn't utilize any of that. No, they use like the dumbed down version of it. Weather at all would be nice. Oh yeah, real weather would be awesome instead of having to use prims and things like that to make. Well, rain no, there is a, there is a, a a good update coming to the um, uh, wind light. There's an update coming to Winlight, which I'm, sure, I'm not sure why Veer hasn't talked about it too much, but 
Oh, I see that was. What are they doing to it? Well, for one thing, you'll be able to do more than a four-hour day. Well, it's not part of technically content creation, so Veer wouldn't. Oh, uh, okay, that's why he hasn't talked about it. Well, it sort of is, because they're adding... You'll be able to script the uh, um, Windlight to experience. But it would you know, be so nice you could to walk. be able to strap on some old uh, flexy hair and then turn on the breeze and be like, oh no, my hair. <laughs> but... Yeah. <laughs> Rain. Or, or, or it, flexi it, it, skirts be nice just to have added, your dress fly you know, up or something. Rain. That would be if for rain. rain. Rain would be oh. great. Wow. That's what everybody expects in Sansar, too. And I pretty much guarantee it, that's never going to happen. If they really? ever implement wind in the SL where it's real moving wind, I'm sticking well, there's 80 wind. foot in the there's flat There's wind in the SL. There's Tell wind in the SL. Huh? There's wind damn right. No, I mean real wind. Yeah, you people are going to have junk flapping in the breeze. I can see that happening. Oh, girl, look. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to stand atop my house with my mid toe balls on and watch my pubic hairs frolic in the wind. That's what I want. I want that kind of experience. <laughs> well, there is wind in SL. I mean, it's if you if you turn it on for particles, it's there. If you uh, uh, flexies use it, um, so you can make you know flexi pubic hair. I guess if you want, then it'll flap in the wind. Um, no, I'm talking. About, I'm talking about moist, wet, sweaty pubic hair that the wind sweeps away the drips of sweat that are falling off into the wind and weather. <laughs> And I can film it in slow motion. My God. My yeah, that kind of imagination. Yeah. That's yes. not, <laughs> not one of my priorities. <laughs> exactly. Like, do the mail in my mouth thing where, like, a woman's walking across a grate and then all of a sudden it's like, whoosh, and you're like, oh, Lord. I, I understand the, uh, the the calculations for the wind used to be very complex and they, they scale that down. I mean, they had. Um, now it's just a simple vector. Yeah, now I'm have to stick with my animated wind dresses from now on. I know it's never gonna happen. Or like, or like, walk around with the with the like a, a vacuum cleaner, and randomly like suck people's clothes off and stuff. It'd be awesome. <laughs> well, where my pants go? They right here in the sack, and you ain't getting back. Well, I did. I think uh, Hi-Fi is going to have cloth physics up. I think they're they're actually even working with some people. Yeah, I don't. You know, I don't think uh, is Hi-Fi it? is ever going to go, any, go anywhere. As far as I think it's already as far as it's gone, and as far as user base. I don't know. I've you, you have, before, you have so. to check it out. Compare- it's, well, it's Philip. It's a. Uh, it's the next, you know, the guy who created SL has right. now gone off to oh, create. That's what that is. Oh, okay. Now I know what you are. What that is. I know somebody I've who's working it, yeah. on it, who's in, a staff member <laughs> in that project. Um, yeah, but I mean, compare. I don't know. His, his idea, I think his, uh, I mean, he, you pretty much have to be in a, in a VR thing, don't you? And have to. I mean, to find Phil, someone, you Phil, had to shake their hand. That's so. What? Philip Linden left us, so? Yeah, he left a long time ago. Yeah. Um, actually, they contacted Probably a good me. thing. Probably a good thing, really. Hi-Fi contacted me uh, a little while ago. Um, I guess because they saw all my Second Life videos. And so they were ask- They were basically asking me why I wasn't in Hi-Fi. And uh, I basically... Well, I told them top thing on my list was no marketplace, content, is it? Content protection. There's no yeah. marketplace. Oh, there, there's a marketplace. You just, is there a marketplace? There, there's no currency yet, but it's oh, about okay. to. They're about to release all this stuff, and that's probably why they started contacting me. But um, so, anyways, I went there. I haven't been there in a while. I went there when the, the first yeah, went, Alpha went, opened. Yeah. Uh, but so I went there again, and compared to Sansar, they're like you know half a decade ahead of them. You know? Well, see, now I haven't been in Sansar, so they they, want, they haven't let me in because. Well, in Hi-Fi though, 
everything like they've actually thought about the desktop versus VR users you know pretty much most of the things that you can do with it on the VR side you can do in the desktop side you know whereas Sansar is like two different worlds you oh, know? Really? oh god but totally really just catering to the the VR can't do anything if you don't have a VR helmet in Sansar okay oh, really <laughs> Uh, but in Hi-Fi, it's totally different. And they have, uh, uh, you know, an actual um, command list, you know, whereas Sansar is a handful of con commands. Whereas in Hi-Fi, you can pretty much do anything. You can pretty much do any game element. I think. So they haven't, uh, I don't know, when, when I was in there, I was like, there was like four objects on the screen, and it said I was, it was reducing my resolution due to low frame rate. It's like, there's nothing on the screen. I mean, I don't like all the aspects of how Hi-Fi is set up and the whole server thing and all that crap, but when you compare the two, Sansar, Hi-Fi, Hi-Fi is miles Miles. I mean, well, they've, had long, they've, been, you know, they've been around a little longer. I think they've been working on it longer. Well, they, they've also been in open beta for a long time, <laughs> yeah. which is the point that I make about all these virtual worlds is you cannot do closed. You're not getting enough information when you do a closed right. beta. Right, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, because they're, they're doing it the way they think it um you know, they, they don't know how people are going to use it. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Whereas Hi-Fi did, was open from the beginning, and they kind of, you know, the, the reason why all of these parts are kind of filled out is because they had user, users there going, hey, I want to play with that too. You know? Yeah, see, I think if they're going to require to, you know, have a $800, you know, headset and then some other stuff, you know, and a supercomputer to run it, it's not going to take off. It's, um, I don't know, you know, the, the VR headset thing has not, you know, taken off like, like people expected. I mean, it, it might come around slowly over it the may, years. But, but it may go the way of 3D TV. Yeah, but you can't, you can't bet your whole business on it. <laughs> Yeah, if it's going to come around, it's going to come around slowly. And I think it's still it's still going to be a, a niche market because one thing that, you know, it's, it's an $800 entry fee, basically. Um, if not more, depending yeah, on the not, computer. Yeah, yeah, that's just without the computer. You know, I mean, what, I think the cheapest one is maybe 700 or something. I don't know. Um, so there's a huge hurdle there. And then you need to have basically the latest graphics card to run that, you know, that there's a that's a five hundred dollar graphics card to run that and then um you know, you got you're talking about eight hundred bucks for a computer that can to put that graphics card yeah. in. Minimum fifteen hundred for your computer. Yeah. And then throw a you know eight hundred bucks on top of that for the, the, the equipment. And if you've got a like a Vive, you need a whole freaking room to mount shit on the wall and all this other stuff and you can't sit down. <laughs> yeah, and I thought about uh, you know, because technically, you know, as a creator, I don't have a reason to get a VR headset. You yeah. know, VR I mean, doesn't I, I think it would be cool. work. <laughs> I think it would be cool, but everything VR I've seen out there is like, why don't they use textures? <laughs> Yeah, and why? Uh, well, you know, I'll, I'll probably end up getting one anyways, just because you know. Oh, I'm I'm waiting for maybe second or third generation of this stuff because I'm not impressed with the, the first generation of this hardware. Well, I just don't want to uh, have a client ask me about something or or, or uh, you know wanting to hire me for a job. And me not having a helmet. <laughs> so, yeah, but you make motion animation. Only reason, really. What's that? But you make oh, I was going to say. Okay. I lost that again. Don't you make motion animations? Yeah, yeah, and it has nothing. Uh, uh, right, VR. So 
doesn't affect me at all. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but at the same time, I I'm also I also do a lot of development, so I might right. have you know. Right, right. What I was my thing about VR is the maximum you can wear one of those helmets is you know forty five minutes to an hour. But you look at the average login time for Second Life. And the average login time is like four hours. There's no way somebody's going to be wearing a VR headset for four hours. Right. So right. I, I don't see VR yeah, being yeah. being VR, that the great. Screen, the screen is not going away anytime soon. They keep well, saying it is. They can wear it for four hours straight, but they're going to end up with the world's biggest neck. Right. <laughs> and, and I would never be able to. I have a big head. Okay, my neck strains just to hold this thing up. Okay, you put a VR helmet on that, you know, I'm gonna have all kinds of problems. I might need a, I might need a chair with a big brace on it. You know? I mean, I think it's great to shoot for, you know, VR in that if you can make VR work smoothly because they got to generate two images, then a single monitor, you know, or image is going to work just fine, you know, as far as lag and all that kind of stuff. So, I think VR is a great bar to shoot for, but that most people are going to really just end up using their monitor. Yeah. I mean, if, if Sensor is only going to cater to the, the VR, they're going to they're gonna die on the spot. It's, it's never going to take off. And, and, you know, the biggest thing that, you know, we've been hearing about all this VR stuff for a while now, but they still haven't like uh, fixed the biggest issues. Like, movement is still an issue. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, anytime you see uh, the VR games, it's like you basically have to teleport around so people don't get sick. Uh, right. Uh I've seen a talk. Uh, basically, you can have no acceleration on the movement. It has to be you know, linear movement. Um, ex acceleration makes you sick. Yeah, I think I saw the same talk. It yeah. was a Unity... Uh... Yeah, yep, yep. I, I personally like Cast AR. I don't know if you've, you've heard of Cast AR. It has no motion sickness whatsoever. The... Um, it actually uses like two small projectors, a mounted, uh, uh, you know, we wear a pair of glasses, kind of like the, the real 3D glasses that you wear when you're in going to the movies uh, for 3D. There's a, a little projector mounted above each, each eye, and it projects an image out, and, um, and then it reflects off of uh, a reflective surface, uh, the same type of surface that, you know, that they use for, um, to reflect uh, for any, like running. projecting two images and it comes back and so you get three 3d but you don't get any motion sickness because not only because you're projecting out onto an it onto a, a, a screen, you're, in the real world. you're in the real world and you can see your hands you can see your keyboards you might have to cover your walls in your office with this reflective material I, I, um, yeah, um, I, need a whole, I don't have a whole room to dedicate yeah you know. Or, or a large umbrella where you, you uh, coat the inside of the umbrella, you know, so that it kind of mounts to your chair and you see how, like, the, kinda, like this dome thing around you. Um, that would work as well. Um, you know, so it wouldn't be, you wouldn't have to really cover your whole room um, with it if you didn't want to. Well, but that was well. lightweight and, no, and no, um, no motion sickness. I know with Vive and uh, Sony's thing, you know, you need a, a good amount of space to be able to set the sensors up and stuff. Um, and uh, I don't know how many people have that kind of space. I don't. I don't got you know a twenty by twenty block in my room. I kind of need to because of my motion capture system, but so I. What do you, I, what do you that's... use for that, by the way? How do you do that? I use uh, I use iPi, uh, iPi Soft Desktop Motion Capture. Which with, uses what, two, what kind of hardware with a Connect? Yeah, two Connect cam, cam cameras. Oh, yeah. two of them. 
Yeah, but I'm you good. get a better um, result if you use PS3 eyes. What? Which one was that? If you use Don't laugh eyes, at me. <laughs> if you use eyes, you get better results than you do using um, Kinects. That's an upcoming tutorial on my channel. Watch it, people. Eyes? What is eyes? Yeah, what is eyes? Get, how old are you? PlayStation. PlayStation the PlayStation eye cameras. PlayStation 3. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Jeez, old they people. Do they work a little bit better, yeah. They work they have a the, uh... lot better. Little was an understatement. Not only can they capture multiple actors at once, but they have a lower jitter rate, and they capture so much more. Almost which, uh, which uh, connector are you using? Which connector? What do you mean? B? Uh, yeah. The first I... one or the second the new one? The first one. See, I don't have any problems. Okay, so people say... <laughs> well, the, well, the, the, the new one is... is... Even better than, um... Yeah, but I'm not gonna up, update yeah. until I have a problem, you know? And the calibration <laughs> for the new one is like, uh... As where you need the two connects, you just... Here's a big square. Forward, back, forward, back. Okay, it's calibrated. Is that the old, um, Xbox 360 connector? Or did you get yeah. the yeah. Windows? See, I've got one. I've got one ex. Uh, I bought it used off of uh, Amazon. Well, yeah, so I, I well, one, you got this one, one the connects it. one. The f just one connects. You don't need to calibrate it. You can just jump right in, but it's still going to be a little bit jittery. Uh, yeah. I've. Uh, I, well, I've been. I. I couldn't find a good a good um, piece of software that would uh, let me use it. What your connects? Yeah. IPod soft is export good BBH. One. Yeah, um, iPod soft is good, but you still have to fix it for Second Life. Oh, okay. Because it, it, ex it exports BVH and a whole bunch of other things, but you need to um, run it through, what was it, Dave's BVH editor, and then you can remove something and then it works. At least that's my method. Oh, see, so I was no. starting to write, write my own software for it iPi allows you to import a BVH and use the BVH as your skeleton. So if you're using it for Second Life, you would just import a Second Life BVH. You could use any BVH that's native to Second Life. What's it, what's it called? Then, iPi? Yeah, iPi. And then you, uh, once you've imported that BVH, now you're using that skeleton and you connect anything you export is going to be compatible with Second Life. Huh, neat. All right. I'll yeah, try it. that. You can you can also do that with a DAE. You can import a DAE, and it'll do the same thing. So you can use, so you import the skeleton to use. Right. Exactly. Oh, that's nice. All right, I'll have to check that out. Then. Hey, oh, oh, oh! Also, you may want to pick up some moves as well if you're going to spend the money. If you're going to spend the money. Some moves. Yeah, a uh, PS3 moves. That's they can cal they can read the hands a lot better. The hands in here and props. Oh, I don't need all that. I don't need hands. <laughs> you don't need but what if you wanna well, uh, all right, fine. Yeah, I, I don't I don't pay attention to that either. Because Wait. I can Well, the thing is is how much time. So should I spend time trying to fix their what they tried to, to tried to do with the controller? <laughs> Or can I spend five minutes and reposition all the hands however I want? You know, well, that's it's just fast. Enemy, I don't know. I think it's a lot faster just to register your hands on there. That way, you don't have to go back in there and be like, mm, "Was my hands up or down for this pose?" But I'm doing more things like guess... dancing than it is for just yeah. static walking and pointing guns at people. Right. That's right. That's what we're doing. But even okay. even with fingers, like people talk about, well, does it track fingers? Well, you know what the thing oh. is? With simple poses, you can make all your hand animations in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. You could I mean you could save a few hand animations, you know, and Right. Between between them. Well, I need to get to back to work, so um it's nice talking with everybody. See everybody yep. next week. I gotta get going too. Great to see everybody. See, you. hopefully we'll see you at the next meeting. Yep. See you next week. See you. It was nice to meet all y'all also.
All right, so um, let me stop the after party. Oh.